Welcome back to Pandora Hearts Anime Review Part 3. This one reviewing the third arc of the anime, Cheshire's. I think it's Challenge, I think it is. Cheshire's Dimension Arc, which covers episodes 11 to 16 and adapts chapters 14 to 23. Yep. Essentially, put a 10 chapter arc adapted for 6 episodes. Yep, my guess is they probably did this one. It's probably similar to what they did with the last arc, you know, have like the like have like what couple of episodes do like one chapter piece, and then so like the third cha third episode they start adapting like more chapters. That's my personal guess, anyways. Also, here's the thing about this: like for the next like for the last three arcs of the series, the only three episodes, so you can probably see about two or three videos of this tomorrow, probably at least four. Yeah. The whole thing with this arc explores more of Alice. Okay. The, ep the the first episode of this arc is pretty much what happened to Gil after Oz, Oz went into the abyss. Basically, he tried running away after the spider gets injured. And then he's convinced by Break to be adopted by the Night Race to get the hands on the power he needs to bring back Oz, a.k.a. the Raven. Oz's uncle Oscar has no problem with this at all. Yeah, he has no problem to be adopted by this family. And he gets a chance to meet his brother, which apparently, according to a brief flashback within this flashback, apparently was a bully to him. And he's kind of like Gilbert. He's got the same color eye as he does, but the other eye is different. He's blonde. Also, he has sort of a sadistic side to him, which is kind of bizarre. Because when we first see him as a child, he's using scissors to cut up stuffed animals for some reason. Yeah, he has serious problems. Also, he's in a nightgown. It's Victoria-era England for you. Yep, apparently back then guys wore freaking nightgowns. Nowadays, only women occasionally wear that. Occasionally nowadays. Usually a lot of older women tend to wear nightgowns. Not all of them do. Yep, and the whole thing with the first episode, this fact it's a flashback episode, it picks up right where last week's episode left off. Also, basically, Gilbert is the one who questions why Alice is wearing different attire. Apparently, Oz has doesn't say anything about it at all. And then, pretty much, we have it where they have in the very next episode, we have sort of a arm wrestling contest over Gilbert's stolen hat. Somehow, they explain it via very funny animation, where his uh, his hat has, has disappeared. Yeah, it's explained by Oscar and Break that he wanted me to think because it's the first time in 10 years he's seen him. And I don't know. Now, in the case of Oscar looking the way he does after 10 years, that is not surprising. The fact he doesn't look like he aged very much. Yes, that is pretty much true for a lot of people. Sometimes, basically, even after 10 years, they age very little. Mm hmm Yeah, the way Oscar looks, I mean, he looks like a guy probably in his 30s, I'd say. 30s, maybe 40s at most. When he's been introduced, he looked like he was probably in his late 20s, early 30s. Now, he looks like he's probably in his late 30s, early 40s, despite like, not much change to him. The way he looks, it's perfectly natural for a man to look like that. Mm-hmm. Yep, so... They go off to arm wrestle. Gilbert. <laughs> here's the thing. Now, you have Gilbert, Oz, and Alice, basically, trying to get the hat back. Oscar bells the guy with the hat and wins by talking him to death. Apparently, talking to him apparently turns him to skin and bones. Yep. The second guy loses because uh, the second person. Now... Gilbert was going to arm wrestle a woman. And then Oscar shows up to substitute because he's a gentleman. So, they arm wrestle. And apparently Vincent's afraid. I mean, it's like Gilbert's afraid because he thinks that he portrayed the family by, by being adopted by the Night Raids. Despite the fact Oscar definitely approved of the adoption. And he sort of loses by default. And then you have Alice taking on the big bulky guy, calling him an octopus. I thought this was so hilarious. Like an octopus. He comes with like very ser serious, hilarious names. And it's like, 
don't expect him to lose to a child, even though she looks like she's 14, though she looks like she's probably a lot older than she looks. Yeah, wrestling for a while, looks like he's about to lose, and Gilbert's like, screw this, just touches Oz's head, activates her power without turning into the, to the Black Rabbit, and defeats the guy by nearly breaking the table. Yep, wins back Oz's, Gilbert's hat. And and what happened to Zach Rusty Ark? Well, he's he went to get washed. Yep, he got the hat. This time he got the hat back. He went to get washed. And well, they have it where Gilbert and uh, Oz basically reunite with Oscar, and it's a very good reunion. Apparently, Alice sees this and she gets uncomfortable, so she leaves and runs to the break. And then she got basically a a paper bag full of apples, mind you. Yes, I've carried a paper bag full of apples. It's kind of heavy carrying that damn thing around. Yep, she runs, runs into break, and then they're taken to another dimension by the Cheshire Cat. Yes, the Cheshire Cat. There is a creature called that here. And it's also, in this arc, I have a Matt, the Mad Hatter shows up in here, though he looks completely different than how he's doing the picked in Alice Wonderland from what I've seen. Yeah, those who think of Cheshire, I think you think the cat goes invisible and smokes weed or whatever the thing is. Here, the Cheshire Cat is simply a chain. Which they view its partial backstory of what the heck this cat is. And from the look of it, I thought it was a girl. Nope, it's a guy. Yep. And we see the Cheshire Cat's house, as they describe it. It's a weird dimension. It's got like stairs go all over the place. Yeah, it's typical alternate dimension stuff you might see in typical fiction. Yeah. And Alice basically gets scared of something and she runs away. Break basically gets taken to another mirror by himself. Where he's got bandaged over his eye. Yeah. As far as I don't think they've ever explained like how the heck. They also have it where I think it was in this arc. I think it was. Where they, where they have it where Oz notices that Break's eye is missing. And... He doesn't explain how the heck that happened, just basically with one eye. So we have, basically, we have, and then we have, well, Gilbert and Oz basically find out where Alice was taken pretty easily by uh, by Oz explaining this to Sharon, who I should first point out, though, in the sub, I can hear, you know, they'll see a subtitle, I can hear it. She refers to her as Sharon Shun. Of course, she refers to him as Master Oz, or at least Oz Salma. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes some titles basically would do that from the site I basically use, where you don't hear the honor, you don't see the honorific printed on screen, but you do hear it. You can hear them basically say it. Mm hmm. Yep. So, they get sent there via her chain, Esquire. Which is the form of a unicorn. What are thinking? Yeah, this is nothing unusual. Women love, girl, little girls love unicorns, so this is nothing unusual. Except that, except this is not much of a fighter. Also, this particular chain loves hiding in break shadow for some reason. Yeah, that's never really explained why. It's that he does. They basically get to be, be at a portal. They get there, and of course, well, Gilbert has to pick up Oz, because Oz loves to pick up. So, they go off searching for Alice, and then, well, they get separated. Well, Gilbert ends up in a memory of Alice's, where he runs into the guy in the green coat, which you reveal his name is Jack. Jack Festus. I think it's how you pronounce the guy's name. Yeah, apparently, he's possibly Oz's ancestor. Oz is meme later on, after he basically just falls right in there. Mm -hmm. Also, apparently, that how Gilbert gets his place. This is after he gets sliced with a Cheshire cat, and Oz is basically nearly strangled by the Cheshire cat because he asks him, why are you here looking for Alice? Because he wants to find memories. This is his liar. And, of course, he explains it to Jack. She's basically like his, his son, like the ray of sunshine. Kind of romantic stuff, from what I can tell, basically implying that Oz might be in love with Alice. It's possible. And Oz goes basically, sends basically, so Jack sends Oz to find Alice. And he comes across something that I had to basically stop eating to see. 
Like, what did that say? What was this? A freaking massacre. Yes, explained with all human sacrifices. And apparently this was the tragedy they mentioned that happened 100, 100 years prior. You see briefly at the beginning of the series where this is basically was. And then Oz is basically look past all these dead bodies. And then he runs into a child version of Vincent. Also, apparently Echo was sent to to Sharon to kidnap her for some reason. Yeah, this is never thoroughly explained why. Of course, she was sent there by Vincent. Yep. Also, the character Leem is led on the fact that Oz is back. Yeah, he's a basically a, a supporting character in the series. He popped up in the previous arc, and he's also playing this one, too. He plays a bigger role in this, slightly bigger role in this one than he does in the last one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Then, Oz basically nearly destroys the place because apparently he has... The clock seal on his chest moved again like it did in the last arc. This will move like one other thing over and causes the dimension to destroy. So Gilbert's sent to find Oz, hopefully to find Alice. And they eventually find Alice. Well, and it's revealed that Brake's chain is, well, even with former Emily, that's a doll he has. He's apparently contracted to the Mad Hatter. That's not a joke. The Mad Hatter. You're probably thinking, oh, you mean the guy who drinks tea and wears the crazy hat with a crazy number on it? This is not the case. The Mad Hatter in this series is simply put a chain that has a similar hat to the Mad Hatter, plus it has all these various items, and it's a chain that destroys other chains. That is the simple reason for this damn thing, for existence. And apparently, he break has a contract with him, and... Apparently, when he uses too much of his power, he starts coughing up black. Like black ink. Not blood. Black. What looks like black ink? Would look, that's what it looks like to me. It could possibly be blood, but this is something odd about anime at times. They tend to color blood black for some reason. Yeah, there's some series that do show blood, like actors supposed to be basically red. But I have heard when blood is in your body, it's basically with colors blue. When it's exposed to oxygen, it turns to red. I read about this basically in science when I was in, high, when I was in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As supreme black, I don't know why. Uh, my, my guess isn't it for anime, so it doesn't spook people. That's my personal guess. Because some people don't like seeing the color red or at least are afraid of seeing lots and lots of blood. And they get basically, like, collapse. This is basically stuff I've heard. Yep. The whole thing about blood, I actually read about that in, in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, they find Alice, and apparently she's chained up to this, like, wall. And thanks to Oz running up these stairs, which is also collapsing. Thanks, of course, to the Mad Hatter, who also kills the Cheshire Cat. But before he kills it, he takes the bell that was around his neck. Yes. A cat having a bell. Yeah, that's nothing unusual for a cat to have because cats love shiny things and they love ringing the bell. And apparently this thing has an important, this is a treasure to him and has it has the truth of what happened a hundred years prior to events of the series. So Oz runs up, frees Alice. Alice is like, what took you so long to find me? And then they get out and of course... They get out, and then the Pentelum episode ends in the most bizarre way possible. Like, apparently, because Gilbert is injured, they end up, they beam in, they get, they end up via Port of Esquire, takes them straight to the Pandora headquarters, and right in the middle of the head, of the Hyros meeting room, and everybody assumes that they're there to assassinate the, the four Dukes. <laughs> and, of course... Alice is, is her bee rabbit form, and then simply put, she basically escapes without harming anybody. Since people are flying, doesn't kill them per se, and of course, apparently she's able to sort of fly in a way by using her sight to slice up the wall, even slices of freaking statues. And there's a funny bit where Lim just running, and he's pulled in her room by Break and Vincent, who they were they, they were able to get back to the real world via the Raven. Yes, the Raven. And, of course, Gilbert basically goes to find Oz. And, well, and what is, and what does Break do? Goes out to Vincent, ask him to return Sharon. Like, return my mistress immediately. He's like, she needs something. Uh, she has something. 
Like, she doesn't have anything I need. You do. Yeah, the whole point of... And apparently it's implied that the whole reason that because he needs something, it's not to explain. Oh, yeah, and it's also revealed that Vincent, he knew it was Vincent right away if he had the Black Roses, which apparently, according to Break, only grow at the Pandora headquarters. Okay. In case you went with the Pandora's headquarters symbol, the, head, the, the symbol of the organization, it's a cross with, like, a jewel, like a... Like a they got like a square jewel in the middle with like little holes in, in the marks of the cross. And it's on a gold chain. This is the symbol of, of a Pandora. Of course, when I think of Pandora, I think of the Pandora from Greek myth. Where this Pandora's box. Where she, oh, even though she's told by Zeus, do not open this box. And she opened it up and let all the evil run out. And it was closed just in time to conceal the hope. <laughs> yep. That's the story I've heard about Pandora's box. Yeah, and many people try to basically try it. There's a couple of things I've seen in fiction where people try to find a damn thing. Once in Tomb Raider film, the other course ended up in the season of Sleepy Hollow. But that's something else altogether. So eventually, uh, eventually Oz doesn't know how to switch Alice back to her human form. So Jack steps in, tells Alice to basically switch back to human form. It's like, that's enough. So that won't do. And he explains who the heck he is. He says, I'm Jack Vastus, the hero of the tragedy of Saffir. <laughs> He's very grandiose, basically, how he explains this. And basically explains he's only barring the body, because the guy's been apparently been dead for the past 100 years. And he sort of explains a lot of stuff. And, of course, you have Limp, who steps in. explains, here's, this is Oscar Vastus, the heir of the Vastus ba ba family. And please take and of course Jack says please take care of him. He's basically he also explains who the 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 big villain of the series is, even though that there was no villain. Glenn Baskerville, the head of the Baskervilles, is still alive. And that was shock. And of course one of the guys says BS. Yeah, he seriously says that in the dub. And he says <laughs> Take my word for it. Yeah, how how could you not believe a guy who you got who you guys tend to worship as a hero? Yeah, but then of course Jack leaves after explaining a little thing. Like you'll find me more soon, and he wakes up in a strange house. I don't think this, sh this might be Sharon's house. I'm not sure. They don't explain where the heck this is, and basically break and and then we have a conversation between Break and Oz. Also, we have it where Oz wakes up, and who's who's head who people are sleeping on his bed with him, on his on his on his right side it's the beautiful Alice, on the on the well actually on his right side his left side it's Gilbert who sleeps at the foot of his bed, and eventually somehow and this one that was so hilarious. Apparently, Oz took time off screen while putting a coat on to put Alice in this bed. And have her basically her foot near Gilbert's head. It's so funny. <laughs> and of course they talk for a while. And of course, apparently, here's the thing. Gilbert eats, like there's two trays of, of sweets. And Break eats all of them. I don't think Gilbert eat, eats a single one. Yeah, he has, he, has a, he has a love for sweets. As for why he doesn't get back Emily, it's not really explained here. He leaves Emily behind, so they go back to... The Cheshire's house, and then of course some stuff is later set up for the next arc, which is, well, the Ludwig School arc. I'm looking forward to basically watching this because this is possibly when they could bring back Oz's sister that she was missing since the start of the series. I think she's going to come back in this arc, but this was a really good arc. Not much like the last arc, where some stuff wasn't explained. This one is mostly like, oh yeah, the, the the episode ends quite interestingly. You have Vincent going back to his house to meet with three Baskervilles. One of whom's got pink hair. It's a woman. Maybe she's a former lover of his. It's possible. Maybe we'll explore this in the next arc. Who knows, okay? So yeah, that's it for this particular review. That's the last video I'm going to do today. Yeah, and also I looked up. Apparently there's no chat that my hair can even come out today. Because... Shona jumped took a week off. I I know they do this, but <laughs> yeah, there was in the second week of the month, which is quite unusual, but that's what the Shona jump for you. So that means there's no new chapter of One Piece, My Hero Academia, 
possibly not even Black Clover. I was wondering, like, why the heck when these chapters have been loaded? And it turns out that they won't release this week. So, yeah, basically, wait till next week, basically, to review this damn thing. So, yeah, so in the case of tomorrow, well, let's see. I'm probably going to finish up the Pandora Hearts series tomorrow. Basically, doing about two, maybe about three videos, maybe four, if I get done uh, some something in the manga. And the case closed, uh, newest episode of the case goes anime. And that'll be it for tomorrow. Of course, I do have some stuff going on Sunday, of course. With three series, regular view, One Piece, Barto, and Dragon Ball Super. Yep, so until we see you tomorrow with more Pandora Hearts videos. And, of course, the review newest episode, case closed. Bye.